In a world where violence, political turmoil, and fear are everyday occurrences, how can we not say that we live in a world of absurdity? As the existential philosophy concerned with the absurd states, the movement of humanity to find meaning and reason in the universe will ultimately fail. In a world of such calamity, this concept of the absurd, one of the pivotal themes of existentialism, can aid in the examination of our human existence and assist in clarifying our heavily conflicted human nature. Now how can you say that the world we live in is absurd? I'm a hardworking American, I got a job, and I think that the world that we live in is completely reasoned and completely structured. Now where did my head go? This is just absurd! Luckily enough, a young scholar from Pittsburgh's prestigious Central Catholic High School was willing to give his expertise in clarifying the origins of this absurd concept. An important component of the absurdist philosophy is the portrayal of human nature as being irrational. Many philosophies try to construct a solution of reason when defining the human nature. However, the absurdist philosophy discards this reason and instead substitutes a conclusion of irrationality. This seemingly pessimistic philosophy was given its roots by Soren Kierkegaard. The theologian at his time discussed religious problems such as Christian ethics, theology, and the emotional responses to choices in life. The most prominent portrayal of the early absurdist philosophy can be found within Kierkegaard's journals. What is the absurd? It is as may quite easily be seen that I, a rational being, must act in a case where my reason, my powers of reflection, tell me. You can just as well do the one thing as the other. That is to say, where my reason and reflection say, you cannot act and yet here is where I have to act. The absurd. Or to act by virtue of the absurd is to act upon faith. I must act, but reflection has chosen the road, so I am to take one possibility and say, this is what I do. I cannot do otherwise because I am brought to a standstill by my powers of reflection. The absurd was more thoroughly defined by novelist and theorist Albert Camus in his novel The Myth of Sisyphus. Absurdity, as he defines it, was a confrontation, a conflict, a divorce between two ideals. In reality, Camus' work, The Myth of Sisyphus, had a poignant meaning during the aftermath of World War II, where thoughts of reasoned absurdity were given an ample environment from which to flourish. Philosophically, the absurd is concerned with two entities, both completely separate. The human, which requires clarity and significance within its life, and the universe, which is cold, silent, and uncaring. The trouble with absurdism is that it dances with fate around the quicksand of nihilism. The nihilistic attitude, an absence from a higher power, puts the responsibility of actions on the person themselves. Much like standard existentialism, the absurd places all responsibility on the actions and choices of the given person, completely separate from any other guiding entity. Absurdism has wiped the slate clean. It leaves us in a blind alley, but it can, by returning upon itself, open up a new field of investigation. Living within the confines of an absurd life may seem difficult and unrealistic. However, many of the actions people make from day to day are unconscious responses to this absurd concept. There are three ways to cope with living in such an absurd situation. First, Man may determine that life is inherently meaningless. He will then live in the present with no thought or consequence. Opposingly, humanity may grasp at a desire to make life meaningful within the beauty of its experiences. An example of this behavior would be filling the void of a meaningless life with a faithfulness and adherence to a higher power, such as God or religion. The most constructive way to live within the absurd is to embrace one's condition within the absurd universe. Then, they can live freely, and as Albert Camus states, living without appeal, to create their own purpose in life. Even with the absurdities, 
of the modern world. It may not be so difficult to understand life and to gain control of one's mind, spirit, and body.